Let's speed up our workflow in Pro Tools and talk about switching between your different track views. All right, so I'm in this example session. It's a bit of a mess. I've just been using it for an example for a lot of my YouTube videos. So it's a bit chaotic. It's more chaotic than you would expect if it was an actual song. But today, the big thing I wanna talk about is switching between different track views. So if you look at the head of one of your tracks, I'm gonna use this audio track as an example. You see that there's this little wave option here. So it says waveform. If you click on it, there are a bunch of different track views. That's kind of the big thing that I wanna talk about today. And if you don't see this, just keep in mind, maybe your track is too short. Right, so what you can do is hover between where two tracks meet and you can drag it out to make it bigger. Um, same thing, I'll just show you with this one because it doesn't have markers below it. So that's kind of what I'm talking about here. We also have similar options with different types of tracks. So this is an aux track, for example, and I have a few options here. You'll notice that the default's volume instead of waveform for the aux track. That's because we don't actually hold any audio files here on the aux track, right? It doesn't have an actual waveform on it. But I just thought I'd do a shorty video today to talk about how there are shortcuts to switch between these options, between these views really quickly, and it'll help you improve your workflow in Pro Tools. So for anyone wondering, let's take a look at it. I am in Pro Tools Ultimate here on my studio machine. It's version 2024.10.2. This should work on more recent versions of Pro Tools. It should work on a bunch of older versions of Pro Tools as well. So give it a try, even if you're not in this version specifically. I'm also um, <laughs> using Rosetta, so um, don't make fun of me, please. I'm sorry. It's embarrassing. It's been a while. I should have switched off Rosetta by now, but I haven't. I haven't. It's working, and I haven't done it. So anyway. That's the version we're in. All right, so like I alluded to earlier, we have these different views for our tracks. A lot of them are automation graphs. So we have the waveform, which is not an automation graph, but we have things like volume, mute, panning, volume trim. These are all automation graphs. So when you choose them, we have a line and we can add breakpoints and move it around. It allows you to change that parameter over time. That's why it's an automation graph. Automation is just changing a parameter over time. So we have these different views. We also have some different views with the actual clips on the timeline. So if I go back to waveform here, you'll notice we have like the clip gain here. We have a little clip gain fader. We're gonna talk about that a little bit today too, but mostly we're gonna be focusing on these different views for the actual tracks. And one thing to keep in mind before we jump into the shortcuts is that you can open up these automation lanes like the volume mute panning, volume trim as sub tracks. So you can open them up below the actual track itself, the main track. So if you click this little, uh, what is it, a square? <laughs> it'll open up one of your automation lanes and you can always switch it between different automation lanes. And you can also add or remove so you can have multiple. So this is one way that I do like to work, especially with things like volume automation and panning automation where I do a ton of it. I will open it up as a little subtrack here so that I can quickly work with the actual waveform if I want, but also quickly work with the automation if I want, you know, copy paste, stuff like that. And I like doing that because in Pro Tools, for example, you have your volume fader, right? This is also displayed. I'm gonna do command equals to switch to my mix window. It's also displayed here. You can adjust the overall volume for your mix, but once you have any kind of automation here on the volume automation graph, what's gonna happen is that's gonna override whatever changes you make to the fader. So I like to see if I've done any automation quickly because then I know not to go and grab for this. I know to go and grab over here instead and then trim the whole thing down overall because that will actually have an effect. It won't be overridden as soon as I hit play. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so the first shortcut I wanna show you is kind of the one that I think of as being a little more useful than the others. And that is if you are on your track, you do control and then the minus key to switch between the volume and the waveform. And that's if you're in an audio track, right? So just control and then minus key that is on a Mac, right? I believe it's a start and then a minus key on Windows, but control and minus key will quickly switch you between your volume and your waveform. Uh, view. So I will do subtracts here to view my automation, but let's pretend I haven't done any automation yet. So let me delete that and let me close this out. Let's say I haven't opened it up yet. One thing that I'll do is, especially when I'm gain staging a whole session, a whole song, is I will want to change everything by the same amount and bring everything down by the same amount so that I have a healthier level going into my master fader. So that's a super common thing that I do throughout the process. <laughs> Honestly, um, a lot of times I don't reduce stuff as much as I should based on how I'm going 
to end up processing it and then it ends up coming up too hot and then I have to, you know, bring stuff down. So I am frequently doing this thing where I want to bring everything down by the same amount. And when I want to do that, you can, if you don't have automation, right, you can use the volume fader and just bring it down by a certain amount, right? And if you remember where you are, like here I'm at negative five, so maybe I want to bring everything down by negative five. I'll just bring it down to 10 and I'll just kind of carefully find that. 10 location and I'll do that to everything, right? But let me undo that. Another thing that you can do, and I really like doing it this way, is control minus, and then I'll kind of do a quick highlight. And then I get my trimmer tool and I get the trimmer tool that's outside of the highlight at the end. And that's because it'll affect everything. And then I bring it down by a certain amount. And if you look over here, see the numbers here, we have the little delta symbol. So it's showing you the change amount. So if you want to change by a certain amount, you can just look at that number and you don't have to do the math. So that's one of the big reasons why I use this shortcut is so that I don't have to do the math. It's simple math. It's kind of embarrassing, but that's just how it is. That's what why I tend to use that, you know, and you can use this shortcut whether you have automation or not, right? Because if you highlight and you're in the smart tool, you have all three tools highlighted up here then you can get that trim tool and trim it down and have it show you that delta, that change amount. And one thing to keep in mind is that depending on the type of track you're using this on, so let me pull up an instrument track, it will do different things. So if I use it on an instrument track, it will switch between different options here, right? So just keep in mind, type of track affects the shortcut. Another thing is that you'll notice my edit selection is here on this track and I've selected the nameplate for the track, but if I were to select a different track, so let me, so I have this track selected, but I have my edit selection here and you'll notice when I use the shortcut, it's going to affect the one that has the edit selection. So just keep that in mind if you're using this really frequently and you don't want to have to think about that, you might want to go to options and choose the link track and edit selection option because then wherever you put your track selection it will also put your edit selection so you don't have to think about those being linked but i like to work with those off and another thing is if you are in another option like panning for example and you use this shortcut it will still work for you it'll switch between waveform and volume it'll just bring you to those right so you don't have to be in one of those two to use the shortcut Another good one is on the Mac keyboard, if you do control command and then the left and right arrows, it will toggle between the options. So uh, I am at the top of the list right now. So blocks, I'm hitting right, playlist, markers, waveform, volume, volume trim, and mute, and pan. And you'll notice if we look at our options, those are the options that are available here. So you can use that shortcut, control command, left and right to toggle between the different options really quickly. Now I'm going to use that to go back to waveform because I like being in waveform. And another one you can use is control shift and equals on the Mac keyboard. And that will toggle on and off the clip gain view for your whole session. So you'll notice here, I have my clip gain option for my clips. I'm going to hold option and return that to zero by clicking on it. And if you do control shift equals, it will disappear. So if you open up a session and you don't have these views and you really want to see them, that's kind of the context where I've had it happen before. Control shift equals to bring them back into place. And inversely, if you feel like it's cluttering things up and you don't want to see it, control shift equals bring it out, right? Now, another good one is for our instruments, for our MIDI instruments, right? If you do control and then plus or equals on the keyboard, it'll open up the MIDI editor for you. So if you like having a bigger view of your MIDI edits, I don't use this a ton, but it is handy, especially if you want to get like a quick view on it. If you're using a smaller screen, I have kind of a larger screen, so I will tend to just go to the notes view like that. So control command and then the right arrow is what I did there to go to the notes view. And I just edit things this way. And often what I'll do is I'll just drag it out a little bit bigger and I'll make the notes display bigger if I want to see them bigger. And usually that's fine for me because I have a pretty big screen. But depending on, you know, how you're feeling about it, how big your screen is, how your eyesight is, you might like using the control and then the plus to open up that um, MIDI editor. And that's the plus or equals button on your regular keyboard, not on your numeric keypad. If you want to use the numeric keypad, you have to go to the equals, right? Avoid the plus and do control and then equals. I had to look at my hands to see which one I was using. Control equals. 
And one more thing that I want to show you is that you can combine these shortcuts with some modifiers to affect multiple tracks at once. So if you add option, for example, so I'm going to do control, option, and then command with the left and right arrows. So I'm combining option with that shortcut to toggle between all the different views for the track. You'll notice that it's going to affect all of my tracks in my session. So just keep in mind, if you want to affect everything at once, maybe to like bring everything back to a certain state, right? You can add that option key modifier. All right, so that's about all I have time for today, but I hope this helps someone out there. Let me know if you have any shortcuts that you would add to this list that help you improve your workflow and speed up your workflow. I love to learn all about them. I'm always adding stuff to my list and trying to see if I can incorporate them into my workflow, see if it helps. So let me know in the comments below. If you found this helpful, please feel free to search my name, Kato Zane, on YouTube for more Pro Tools tips, more audio engineering and music production tips. And I also have a Patreon if you want to check that out. It's patreon.com slash Noise, and we have some additional content on there for the Patreons. We have a Discord server. That's kind of the big thing I've been focusing on. We're running a book club on the Discord server. We just finished, oh, I brought it back down to my house. We just finished reading How Music Works by David Byrne, and we're picking another book. I think we already picked our book. I forget what we picked, though. Um, I don't know. I'll put a link to it in the description, I guess. And other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday. And thank you so much for hanging out. Okay. I'm really excited because next week I'm going to fly out to Nashville to be on a panel at East Irish Studios for the second Mix Her event. I was... Uh, I won a spot in the Mix Her event last year and made it to the end and it was so much fun and I had such a good time and it was such a uh, supportive environment and it's run by Dolby and engineers and UMG and so like UMG booked my travel and my hotel and I feel really fancy and I have some imposter syndrome about it but it's going to be really fun and I'm really looking forward to connecting with everyone there because it was such a good time last year so that's kind of my news. And I'm trying to take a weekend. I'm trying to take a day off at least one day off this weekend, which I haven't done since April and it is now June. So I'm really, really hoping that I make it. We're going to see if I if I do it. OK, I hope you're doing well. Talk to you later.